Hey, Trunk Allen Mulhall here for the um, introduction to the X-ray equipment. So this is a fabulous machine. It costs many, many thousands of dollars. So we're going to want to be careful when we use this machine. This is the old one, and we still want you to be just as careful if you end up using the new one. All right, so when you come on over, let me show you some things on here. You'll notice there's some buttons on the very front here. The power on and off key, this is always just going to be here. So you're going to want to make sure that we're powered on. Now, when you actually turn on the device, you turn it on using this timer switch. Now, you're, everything's completely safe when you turn this on, all right? This just gives power to everything. Uh, the x-rays don't actually go on until you actually hit this red button. Now, I'm not, even if I hit this red button, nothing's going to happen up here. You'll see that there's a red light on the top platform. When that goes on, this sucker here starts emitting uh, x-rays. So right now, everything's uh, safe. You have a, an arm here that's able to rotate through an angle with respect to this little piece here. Now, right here, this is the place where you're going to be putting your crystals. So we're going to go ahead and start with a sodium chloride crystal, so just, you know, plain old table salt. But this particular piece of table salt costs way more than the Morton's version that you can buy in the store. Uh, these cost about $100, so we're not going to want to use them. We're going to have a box on here where all of these tubes are going to be nicely organized. And every time you take a crystal out, before you leave this station, you're going to want to make sure you put the crystal back, put the lid on, and then place it back in the box where you found it. And you want to keep track of these. Now you know this crystal is sodium chloride because it's colored black on the bottom of the crystal and then the bottom of the test tube is also black. So that should be a match so you know what crystal is what just in case there seems to be disarray. But we're hoping that there's no disarray. So this crystal sits inside this holder. Now they claim that there's a matte finish to one side of this crystal and then a not matte finish. I have a very hard time telling. I, I just, you're not gonna be able to see it in the video, but this side looks really rough and ragged. So if you see that side, it's probably the other side that we want to face towards uh, the x-ray emitter here. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in that orientation. So you just loosen this little screw. You can see that I'm having trouble with it. So once you get it in its place, you righty-tighty that screw and it holds that um, crystal in place. So you'll see that the x-rays will come from here, hit this face of the crystal, and it'll be they'll be reflected off into this device here, which is our, our Geiger tube, which is going to detect the x-rays. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach a stepper motor uh, to this gear so that this sweeps through all this angle automatically. And then our software, which I'll show you in a second, will take the output of this and then give us a plot of intensity, which will be counts per second uh, versus the angle that we're seeing here. All right. Now, you'll notice I can move this arm rather easily. Uh, that means the stepper motor is not engaged. To engage the stepper motor, you're going to want to see how this, this is movable. That If you loosen this knob right here, this will be loose. When you bring it all the way to the right and then tighten this knob, you're going to see that you can no longer move this arm. So that's how you know the stepper motor is engaged. All right, now that you have everything set up here, we're going to go ahead and close the tube. I guess I'll show you one thing. You're going to see that there's a piece of electrical tape here, and then Majid, if you could point over to this side, there's a piece of electrical tape here. Uh, that's not a mistake. They're here to set the home near and far positions when this little sensor goes over the black piece of tape. So I'll show you how that works with the software, but that should be there. Please don't remove them. All right, we're going to go ahead and close the top tube here. You'll see that there's a latching device here. You're going to want to make sure that goes into the right side of this hole because this device has a three-step safety check. Basically, you're going to want to, once this latch is into this hole and you shift it over this side, there's a connection that tells the machine, okay, the lid's on, and there's also two connections back here. So what you're going to want to do is when you lower this into here, the best thing to do is to grasp it with both hands, and you're going to want to shift it that way. All right, and you should hear a click. Now, if everything's in place, pushing this red button will turn on x-rays and see how it didn't work. Okay? Nothing's happening, which means I don't have the lid on right. So usually you just have to finagle it until you get it. So you'll see that I now have a red light on here. Now I'm emitting x-rays. All right. This tube is connected to this teletomic counter. You are not going to have to touch anything on this other than the on and off button. 
And when you turn that on, you're going to see that this is going to start counting because the Geiger tube is actually seeing x-rays. Another thing you have to turn on is this device right here. This is for the stepper motor. Okay? You're going to turn that on. There'll be a, a red light that comes on. Red light is good. All right? You have those two things on here. You have this red, on light, red light on here, meaning there's x-rays flow and you're good to go. One more thing you're going to want to check before you take data is this guy right here. This is the tube current of the x-ray tube. You're going to want to make sure that's somewhere between 30 and 40 microamps. This will tell you if there's actually x-rays coming out of that tube. And, you know, the count you can hear it as well. But this is the actual thing that you're going to want to look at. All right, so make sure that's reading somewhere between 30 and 40 microamps. Okay, so it looks like everything's good to go. I want to start taking data. So this is what I'm going to do. You're going to want to open up Telex driver control. This is right on the desktop. You'll get this warning. You just click yes. All right. Here's a nice old looking piece of software, but it works very well. First thing you're going to want to do is to go up to device. Click that. Check that COM port COM2 is highlighted, and then click connect. That's going to connect the software to the machine. You'll get a little pop-up telling you the beginning and end home marker positions. Uh, and then right means the arms on the right side of the machine, so that's all good. You click yes. All right. First thing you're going to want to do before you go ahead and collect data is do the calibration. So under setup here, you're going to see where it says manual. You might have nothing here when you open the software up. You're going to want to click this button here to go ahead and do the manual calibration. So you click that. Home markers in place. That's asking you about those black pieces of tape I mentioned before. They're there. So you click yes. Now you're going to watch the arm. It's going to go all the way over to its leftmost position, which is essentially where that sensor is going to see the black tape. Once it reaches that location, all right, it's going to ask you to tell us the angle of where it's sitting. So when you look down top down through that center hole, I'm going to see 20.5 uh, degrees. So it'll be on the top down there. I don't know if you can pick that up. See it in there? 20.5 degrees. Perfect. So on the software, you put 20.5 degrees, click OK. Oh. So now it's going to go all the way to the final position. <clears throat> you should mind as well that the, um, the this cable <clears throat> is, is it doesn't get chewed up when the thing is in motion. Perfect. Yeah, so just keep an eye on that when it's moving. So now if you do top down over there, you're going to see 116 degrees. We click OK. All right. Now, I don't know if you noticed in the video, but the x-ray is turned off. It could be the lid kind of got dislodged for whatever reason, so you just go ahead and do that, and then they come back on. All right, so if that happens, don't worry about it. But if you do break this tube, that'll be $2,000. We found that out the hard way. Okay. All right, so now we're good to go. We're calibrated. All right, you might want to put a file name for our experiment, so we'll just say test in summer. All right. All right, now for some reason, this happened to us before. Remember we didn't have the start button highlighted? Yeah. And for some reason, we're not really even sure why that happened. So we end up having to go through the calibration one more time. All right, so you just saw that we calibrated it twice and the program would not let us actually do anything with that calibration. So this is what you do. You close the program, right? You have cell phones. What happens when your Pokemon Go app closes? You close it down, you open it back up again. So you come over here, you open your Telex driver, click yes, go to your devices, go to connect. Okay, everything that you previously did will just be there. We're gonna say test in summer, so put your file name. And now you're gonna see that it has our calibration already ready to go and we're gonna go ahead and click start. So what this is gonna do, you can change the beginning and end of your actual scan. Uh, what you're gonna to wanna to do for your crystals is set it at the tw at 21 to 116, so leave that alone. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna change uh, this time limited value from 0.5 seconds to something else. You might make it 0.1 seconds. And then the resolution, you're gonna to wanna to make this resolution better because your scan's gonna to wanna to take about 45 minutes to get a really fine looking scan. What we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it at 0.5 seconds and 0.5 degrees just to give you a quick scan to show you some of the peaks and what's gonna happen there. And then Dr. Mohol's gonna to talk during the actual thing too, just to show you. So we're gonna hit start. Now you're gonna see the arm's gonna to go to that starting degree at 21 degrees. We're gonna watch this cable. Well, make keep sure watching that cable. Tangled, to get tangled and it'll, it'll grind up the plastic gears. Now notice what you're hearing too in the video is the counts, and you can kind of tell that you're getting more counts at different angles. 
So that's obviously going to be important. Oh, there's a lot of counts right there. So now it'll start scanning. Now it's going to go fast. And there's the, and the, now the graph is being updated live. So there we're going along and we're seeing the x-rays that are hitting the Geiger Muller tool have been scattered by the oh, there's a peak. And look, some directions are very bright. If you tilt the crystal in some directions, you see there's a lot of brightness in the x-rays. When you see your first peak, that's for, for there's a relationship d sine theta equals n lambda and equals one for the first peak. When you see your first peak, you should reverse engineer when you think theta is going to happen for n equals two and then predict it. So, because you'll be doing a long scan and you, should, you don't be sitting here doing nothing. So you'll see the first peak and then you'll think to yourself d sine theta equals n lambda. So figure out what the theta is for the next peak. And remember something, this outside thing is 2 theta. There's a, a, a gauge on the inside for theta. So, so when you have d sine theta equals n lambda, take the number off this scale and divide by 2. Okay, so right now we're at theta equals uh, 80. That, uh, 2 theta is 80, so theta is 40. Okay. All right. So if you come back to this plot, I'll, this is not what yours are going to look like. What you're going to do is you're going to get much finer data, and you're going to see really defined peaks for the n equals 1 k alpha and k beta. K alpha and K beta uh, x-rays, you should see an N equals 2, and then also over here, you should be able to see a, an N equals 3, no problem, with the finer data collection. All right? Okay. I think that's it. Uh, you got a scientist? Runchin is a great person. All right. That's it.